now that I'm an old man. I speak to you not as the image or video guy, but as an explorer. I've deciphered ancient records, once known as the Internet, and uncovered traces of 14 distinct large language models. They called them LLMs. Let me show you how this once mighty technology worked. <laughs> If you're wondering, well, here we go again, but where is he getting all this information from? The answer is simple. Head over to LM Arena and click on Overview. You'll instantly see the top models in the space, complete with benchmarks and colourful graphs. But there's also another route. Go to Artificial Analysis and select Models. What you'll get isn't just a long list. It's a direct comparison, supported by some nicely designed bar charts. If you're paying attention, you'll notice the two sites don't always agree on model quality. What matters to me is which platforms actually make sense for this comparison. So I pick the 14 that do, a mix of full chat frontends, raw API models, open source tools, and cloud workspaces. They don't all work the same way, but that's exactly the point. We use LLMs in very different ways, depending on the task. At this point, you might be thinking, wait a minute, aren't you the image or video guy? Why are you suddenly giving us a lecture on LLMs? A fair question. And here's my answer. Understanding how different platforms perform actually matters more than you might think. When I look at my daily workflow, the tool I use most isn't Midjourney, Nano Banana, Kling, Suno, or Eleven Labs, though all of them are important. No. The one that runs in the background almost constantly is ChatGPT. It's like having an extra team member, helping me think through ideas, write drafts, translate content or dig up information when I need it. As you can imagine, I don't just ask questions like what's the weather today or how many R's are in the word strawberry. I often throw these models into deep waters, complex topics, niche problems, detailed tasks. And to be honest, I've run into some real limitations with ChatGPT. Some call it hallucination. I'd call it confusion, misinterpretation, cognitive overload, or just plain refusal to cooperate. There are moments when it forgets everything we previously agreed on and produces something so off that I'm tempted to respond, are you kidding me? The longer the chat and the more material I provide, the more likely this happens. And once it starts, the trust breaks down fast. If I can't tell where things went right and where they didn't, that's a serious issue. My current method is this. I create something in ChatGPT, then run it through Claude or Gemini for cross-checking. Sometimes even that doesn't help. If all three confidently declare the sky is green, then something's seriously broken. Before I show you the platforms in detail, let's give them a quick test run. Nothing fancy, just four practical tasks that I deal with almost every day. I open the app, start a new chat, select the latest model if possible, type in the prompt and hit run. First test, word count. Sometimes I hit hard character limits. So I say, this text has 120 words. Please shorten it to 40 without changing the meaning. Sounds simple, but only five models actually manage to produce 40 words. ChatGPT, Claude.ai, Google Gemini, Manus.ai and Z.ai with GLM 4.6. Especially with ChatGPT, it depends heavily on which model version you're using. I've run into issues there, especially when asking for strict word or character limits. Second test, YouTube video analysis. The prompt, can you analyse this YouTube video and summarise its content for me? Only four platforms were able to handle the task, Google Gemini, LeeChat, Grok and Manus.ai. As expected, Google Gemini performed best, no surprise since it's part of the same company that owns YouTube. Third test, thumbnail feedback. Let's say I asked an LLM two days ago whether my thumbnail worked and it said, excellent choice. The Boxer Santa thumbnail is a strong, memorable and perfectly fitting option for the topic. That actually happened. Gemini and ChatGPT both praised it but now I tell the model the thumbnail didn't perform. Why not? 
Let's see what they do with that. Every platform acknowledged the issue and gave a reason. But six of them went a step further and offered concrete suggestions for improvement. Google AI Studio even generated a brand new thumbnail proposal. Fourth test, help with prompt creation. This one's personal because it's one of the most important things an LLM can do. Help craft a really good detailed prompt. I asked, hi, I'm using Midjourney, but I'm not very good at writing prompts. Can you please help me? Then I described what I wanted, a man in a potato sack and blue garbage bag hat, standing on airplane stairs. Photorealistic, cinematic, high-end look. That gives the LLM a specific setup, but still enough creative freedom to interpret. Now here's what surprised me. Only four models, DeepSeek, Manus.ai, Z.ai, GLM 4.6, and Ernie 4.5 Turbo, actually knew that Midjourney is already on version 7. All the others used old numbers like V5, V5.2, V6 or V6.1. And since I trusted the response, I ended up using that incorrect version in my real prompt. The results you're seeing here were generated with those mismatched versions. But if you remove the version info and focus on the core prompt, the quality improves. Which one looks best? That's up to you to decide. But I would say Grok, DeepSeek Minimax M2, Manus.ai and Google AI Studio all delivered promising results. Let's talk about the interface. If you've seen one LLM, you've seen them all. It's almost uncanny how similar these platforms look. One layout seems to have set the tone, and the rest just followed. Centered input bar, collapsible chat list on the left, a few toggles for model settings, maybe a dark mode option here and there. Nothing wild, you won't need a manual to get started, but the real challenge isn't navigating the layout, it's crafting the prompt. The better your input, the better the result. So the key skill isn't learning the platform. It's learning how to ask the right question in the right way with just the right amount of context. That's where the actual work begins. Let's get into the actual platforms. What follows is the result of hands-on testing, cross-checks with other LLMs, verification via perplexity, and some good old-fashioned common sense. Of course, there's room for error, but this gives you a working overview of what's out there. The order doesn't reflect ranking, and I won't get into pricing details, since those change fast and aren't always clear. ChatGPT by OpenAI is still the heavyweight among LLMs, a reliable all-rounder with strong output, wide integration, and huge user adoption. It's fast, stable, and excels in writing, coding, and creative tasks. But it struggles with ultra-long chats. Earlier instructions tend to vanish, and that thread you were following? Gone. Claude by Anthropic is known for its calm tone, editorial polish, and huge context window. With 200,000 tokens, it can analyse entire books in a single go. That's a game changer for structured tasks. But when things get vague or nuanced, Claude sometimes plays it safe, a little too safe. Google Gemini shines in multimodal tasks, thanks to deep integration with Gmail, Docs, and Notebook LM. It handles YouTube links, understands image prompts, and has a solid sense for research. Google Gemini offers predefined tasks like create image or write, making it easier to use key features without worrying about the model behind it. LeChat by Mistral AI takes a lightweight, open source approach. It runs fast, handles code well, and is transparent in its design. You can even run it locally if you want full control. But when it comes to deep reasoning, ambiguity or editorial nuance, the model starts to slip. Great for developers, less so for storytelling. Grok by XAI takes a fresh, unconventional approach. It's fast, witty and deeply linked to real-time data from X, formerly Twitter. Grok shines in casual conversations, current events and trend-savvy responses. While it presents itself with a bold, informal tone, Grok delivers well-structured and clear outputs, making it a distinct and capable alternative to more conventional LLMs. DeepSeek from DeepSeek AI is a no-frills performer. Clear output, solid code understanding, and strong consistency across tasks. It's built on open weights, integrates easily, and is cost-efficient. 
but it's not great at tone or creativity. Multimodal capabilities are limited, and the language can feel dry. Quen.ai by Alibaba Cloud brings together strong multilingual coverage, reliable coding abilities, and growing multimodal support. It performs well across many benchmarks and shows real potential for business integration. While some areas outside China are still developing, the platform is expanding quickly, and its open weight structure makes it a flexible and promising tool. Kimi K2 by Moonshot AI is built for complex agentic workflows with large context windows, real-time tools, and a transparent architecture. It feels stable and accessible despite its technical depth. But outside China, the ecosystem is still small and documentation remains uneven. A strong foundation, not yet fully global. Minimax M2 by Minimax, AI is sharp, efficient, and clearly focused on code and agentic workflows. Its MOE structure delivers high outputs at low cost, especially for developers. A relatively new entry, yet already moving into the orbit of the leading models. Manus.ai by Butterfly Effect Technology positions itself as more than just a chatbot. It plans, executes, and acts with automation, multimodal tools, and agentic routines. While Manus AI delivers solid results in structured web queries and task automation, it still has room to mature, particularly in areas like stability, creative depth, and transparency around data use. GLM 4.6 by Z.AI runs on an open mixture of experts model with strong coding skills and agentic focus. Its infrastructure is solid, but the global ecosystem still feels early stage. Documentation and multimodal performance are not quite there yet. Google AI Studio isn't a model platform per se, but a cloud-based workspace to access Gemini and related models. It enables fast prototyping with multimodal inputs, but keeps users at the surface. Direct control over model behavior is limited, and everything is tied to Google's ecosystem. Llama 4 Maverick by Meta is a modern multimodal model with open weights, high context range, and solid image text performance. It's technically strong, but licensing, tooling, and community support still feel underdeveloped. Ernie 4.5 Turbo by Baidu is another interesting option for users. With solid results and a cost-efficient setup, it natively handles text, image, audio, and video. But outside China, infrastructure and licensing clarity are still works in progress. A strong model with clear regional focus, an Ernie 5.0 is already on the launch pad. Can you name a single best model? Not really, but once you dig into the benchmarks, some patterns start to emerge. For pure text work and complex reasoning, ChatGPT, Claude and Gemini tend to lead the pack, sometimes neck and neck, sometimes with a bit of distance. When it comes to image tasks, especially with vision models, Gemini takes the lead, followed by GPT, Claude and Quen. In math and logic, the top three are ChatGPT, Kimi K2 and Grok. And for agentic workflows where models plan, decide and act on their own, it's once again ChatGPT, Kimi and Grok that deliver the most consistent results. In coding, Grok is currently ahead, not far behind, GPT and Kimi K2. That's a crucial detail for developers. In terms of speed, Gemini, Grok and Llama are reliably fast, and Quen and Minimax M2 are surprising contenders here as well. If cost matters, GPTOSS, Llama, DeepSeek and Grok Fast offer the best performance to price ratio. Claude sits at the higher end, with Gemini somewhere in the middle. So what do we learn from this? There's no single model that wins at everything, but the strengths are clearly different. And if you know what you need, you can pick the right tool based on your task, your budget, and your pace. My conclusion. When you switch between platforms, you'll notice differences in response time, output quality, research accuracy, and cost. Some models are open and flexible, others tightly controlled. Some embrace open source, others clearly don't. My workflow starts with ChatGPT, combined with a dose of manual research and common sense, to avoid blindly accepting any predefined narrative. 
I then cross-checked the results with Google Gemini and Claude AI. If the responses are wildly inconsistent, I bring in perplexity to find the most coherent middle ground. Of course, this approach fails in scientific or deeply technical contexts. When two platforms say one plus one is two, and a third says it's four, there's no way to average that into truth. One major request, we need more content per chat. A model should actually remember the user's instructions and not simply tap out halfway with a no idea what you're talking about. The ritual apologies in those moments are borderline ridiculous. We all know they have zero effect on what comes next. The model just resets and starts the same loop again. Any LLM that repeatedly offers vague or inaccurate answers, especially when tinted by ideology or bias, risks losing trust fast. And once that happens, it slides into irrelevance. In the end, everything depends on clean, balanced training data. That's it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much for listening. See you soon. Your channel, AI, now you know.